Hello, welcome to this lecture video. So today, we will be discussing row echelon forms. So when do we say that a matrix is in a form of a row echelon form? So we say that it is in a row echelon form if uh, number one, so let us consider that all zero rows consisting entirely zeros are at the bottom second it is also said that the first non zero entry is called the leading one. The next one. The first non zero entry from the left in each row is a one, and this is called leading one it's called leading one for that row next number three each leading so each leading one is to the right all leading ones in the row above it. So we also say that it is in a reduced echelon. It is in a reduced echelon if each leading one is the only non-zero entry in the first column. So which means, so let's consider the following. Um, it is, uh, as mentioned, we say that a matrix is a row echelon form. It all, all zero rows are at the bottom. The first non-zero entry from the left is called the leading one. And each leading one is to the right of the leading ones and the row above it. It is also said that it is a reduced if each leading one is the only non-zero entry in the first column. So for instance, let's consider an example here. So if we have zero, one, and then let's say a given number five four three two and then another zero 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 one and then just mainly a number and then zero 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 one and then two zero 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 one so this is a row echelon form. So if you notice, you have here, so it is like actually a stairs. So all the um, eh, all the elements at the bottom are zeros. So we have here zeros and then one, 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 one is the leading one. Now, if we will uh, consider more other example for this, so let's say, for instance, can we consider 0, 2, uh, two 1 and 0, 0, 1 as row echelon form? So this is not a row echelon form, though we have here zeros on at the bottom because we have 2 here. So this must be 1 for us to say that it is the a row echelon. So if we have one, five, zero, 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 one, so this is a row 
Echelon 4. Now, actually, if we will just say um, this example, the second one. So since we have here one as the leading and then one also for the leading, we actually consider this as a reduced row echelon. So number, the second one is a row echelon form, particularly a reduced row echelon form. So if we have also one, zero, three, zero, or any number, let's just use asterisk, zero, one, asterisk, zero, 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 one. So this is also an example of a reduced row echelon. So this is how, of course, to um, determine whether our matrix is a row echelon or a reduced row echelon. So as long as it satisfies now the mentioned conditions like the bottom star zero, the first leading value is equal to one. And if uh, it is, we have leading one, however, it is not, let's say it is at the left side. So let's say one, zero, three. And then the value here is, let's have zero, one, two. However, we have here zero, one, zero, zero. So we have a leading one, but uh, since this is already in the third column, so the one must be here also in, the, uh, sorry, it's third row, one must be in the, the third column. So it's again not a row echelon form and also it's not a reduced row echelon form. Now let's have an example on how to reduce our echelon form into or to transform our echelon form into a reduced echelon form. So let us consider example Mm -hmm. Where is it? So let's consider a sample echelon. So let's just locate our slide or our um, document. This one. Okay. So given this, we have x plus y plus z is equal to 4, 2x plus y minus 2z is equal to negative 5, 3x plus 2y plus 7 uh, plus z is equal to 9. So if we will transform this into augmented matrix form, so it is 1, 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, negative 2, negative 5, 3, 2, 1, and 9. So our objective is to reduce this to row, a reduced row echelon form. So when doing so, uh, let us now, since we already have one here as our first element, so I'll not touch this anymore. So my next objective is how will I make this zero since, of course, as mentioned in our description of what is echelon form, row echelon form, is that this must be equal to zero. So all bottom values below the leading, the leading ones is or must be equal to zero. So to remove this, I'll use row number one. I'll multiply row number one to negative two and add it to our row two. So that is now, let us consider negative 2 R1 plus R2. So if we will do the operation, so it means that we are divide, or rather we are adding negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 
2 times 4 is negative 8 plus negative 5 is negative 13. So this is the new value of our row 2. Now, um, what is the next? So let us move to our next uh, operations, row operations. So here, to remove also 3, we need to multiply negative 3 or, sorry, so we, we actually need to multiply negative 3 or 3 or 1 rather. So we will multiply negative 3 to R1 and add it to R3. So that is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 9 is negative Three. So this is our new value. Okay, let's move. So as the, uh, we can see here now, we already transformed the um, numbers below our leading one to zero. So we have zero, zero. So next, let's move to the next column. So what will we do to our next column? So our objective is, of course, um, as mentioned again, the leading one is a positive one. So it cannot be negative. So in the row two, it is negative one. So we have to multiply it by a negative one because negative multiplied by a negative is equal to positive. So it will become now negative 1 times 0 is 0, negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1, negative 4 multiplied by negative is positive 4, negative 13 multiplied by a negative is positive 13. So this is now our new value. Okay, next. So what will we do next? So... If we will add R2 with R3 to change our row 3, because of course our objective is to change again negative 1 to 0, because this is below our leading 1 in the second row. So just like with our procedure in the first one, so what we did is to make sure that the first number in our cell of row 1 is 1 and then all the numbers below it is equal to 0 or it, it must be 0. And then after that, we targeted that the second number in the, or the number under row 2, row 2 column 2 is the 1. So we multiply it by negative 1. So now, to remove negative 1, uh, we can just uh, simply, because this is a positive and a negative, we can just simply add row 2 and row 3. So the answer is 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 4 plus a negative 2 is 2. 13 plus a negative 13 is equal to 3. So next objective, our goal is to make... Uh, to be equal to 1 and to do that we can simply multiply 1 half because 1 half of 2 is equal to 1. So 2 times 1 half or divided by 2 is equal to 1. 10 times 1 half is equal to 5. So this is our entry for row 3. Okay, next. So let's go back to our row number number two. So since the value here is a four, we will change this into zero by multiplying negative four to row one and adding it to row two. 
So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 plus 4, it is equal to 0. Negative 4 multiplied by 5 is negative 15 plus 13 is negative 7. So this is our value. Next. So what, are, uh, what else do we need to do for us to reduce this and to reduce the row echelon? So let's go back to, so our objective as mentioned is, so we can uh, already change this to zero by multiplying negative one to our row three and then adding it to row one. Because, of course, negative 1 plus 1 will give us negative 1 multiplied by 0. Ah, sorry, multiplied by, or rather add, added by um, 1, it is equal to 0. So if you notice, we are already using the values below. Uh, we're using R3 simply because after changing this or transforming the bottom values into zero, even if we're going to multiply it with row one or row two, it means that the answers in the um, uh, bottom of the leading ones will retain the zero. That's why we are using now row three. While in the, the first operations, if you notice, we use R1 to change it to zero or rather to change other values in the row two and row three. Okay, so what is our value? One, one, zero, negative one. So this is negative one multiplied by zero is zero plus one is one and so on. Okay, next. Mm, what else do we need to do? So this is the last step because we already have here one, one, one in the last step. So how did we arrive? So since we have still one in our second column, we need to change this again to zero so we can actually make use of our row two because this is one plus a negative one if we multiply this to negative negative one so the result is zero so one times a negative one is negative one plus one zero and of course since this is already zero so a negative of a zero plus a zero is zero so negative Seven plus a negative one is positive seven minus one or plus a negative one is six. So this is our value. So this means that the value of x is equal to x is equal to six, y is equal to negative seven and Z is equal to positive 5. So these are our values. So in case, for instance, we did not arrive at this value, it means that we have some, um, we can use notations like uh, RST to represent other values that can be substituted. So it means that there are um, more than one answer. But for the case of this example, we only have one unique answer, and that is 6, negative 7, and 5. So thank you for watching.